Hi guys, welcome back to a new video. Uh, it's going to be a short one, but a quick thing we'll go over. Um, I alluded to it in the year previous videos, etc. And um, about the journey around the First World War. So, um, so this video, as you can probably tell by the title, is about putties. <clears throat> Specifically, putties of the Great War. So, I have a couple examples here. Um, uh, some are original, some are, well, post-World War I, obviously. But, um, because... Original Great War ones are fairly expensive now, depending on where you find them. So, quickly go over a few. So, what I will say first, so, um, like a lot of guys uh, who are doing Great War who want to get sort of proper looking parties, you can't get access or don't want to, say, use original ones because they don't want to ruin them, obviously, um, use a substitute. So, these, if you're familiar with the sort of uh, the Cold War period or even like World War Two, or even like the Scottish um, during the Great War, um, who use the short putty. So these are short putty. So they're about three foot. Um, three foot. Yeah, about three foot. Three yards. Yeah, about three foot long. Um, strips of cloth, and they're eating, and they're all woven, etc. Um, these ones, um, I think the the weave does differ that differ somewhat to what uh, was seen in the Great War, but basically it's similar. So. Why, I mentioned, why am I mentioning these about the Great War? So obviously, yes, some units use the short putties, for example, the Scottish units, after they done away with, say, spats and things like that early on in the war, and certain things along those lines. <clears throat> um, so in relation to these, using the long putties, what a lot of guys in within reenacting or um, other things to do with the Great War are either getting three to four pairs of these depending on how tall you are um obviously to get that like good like um look where it goes up to your just below your knee um they get for example like i have three pairs of these so you would have six in total um you would then cut off the um, triangular tabs on the end with the with the tapes attached on two of the pairs and then sew those pairs directly on to the pair with the existing tape on so um as i said so these are the short putties um seen from the late 60s up until the um mid to late 80s when they the combat highs were brought in etc and then putties and uh ankle boots or um boots dms and so they were known at the time uh were faded out for the high boot but um very very good piece of equipment um um they can be a pain in the ass, especially the long putties. They can be a very big pain, but uh, it's just how it is, really. So, so that's the short putties. Um, I'll do like a comparison at the end. Well, I'll roll them all out, and then you can see the length, etc. But yeah, I'm only going to make this a short video anyway. But yeah, so that's the short putties. So as I said, so three pairs of those, um, tuck them together, and then you get these. So as you can see, they're considerably larger because it is three pairs. So these come up to about nine feet. Um, they are really, really good. So I managed to get the um, short putties for about thirteen quid a pair, which is it's racking up a bit. But about thirteen quid a pair from um, what price glory in the US. So they've still got a bunch of them in. So if you are getting into Great War or even doing like Cold War or Second World War as well, um, worth getting them from there because they're still quite a good price. Because most of the ones you find on eBay or even Facebook Marketplace now, they're creeping up in price. Um, Average pair I've seen on there is about 20 to 30 quid, depending. Um, some of them I've seen 50 pounds, which is ridiculous. I would never pay more than 20 pounds for a pair of um, putty, um, short putties that is, no matter where they come from, no matter what the date on them are, is, because it's, it's just, they're still fairly common. Uh, and if what price you can get like batches of, like, like unless you get like cases of like 100 of them, yeah, they're still around, they're still around. Obviously the long putties, that's a different situation. That's why a lot of these short putties have been made into long ones. Um, so as I said, you take the tapes, uh, cut off the tape end on two of the pairs, and then you sew um, them directly onto that um, as it goes. Um, sorry, there we go, right. <laughs> yeah, so I'll unroll these um, at the end, as I said, and we'll take a um, look, at it, look at them all together. Sorry for the brief cut there. So as I was saying, um, so yeah, the long putties and I'll roll them out, etc. So the reason I did this, um, I've seen many other people do it before, um, just because it gets, it's, 
the right material, they're a good colour, obviously because they're basically the same as what I use throughout. Um, and it's that sort of strip. Unlike with reproductions nowadays, you that you can't they're sort of like cut just between from like a generic piece of cloth um and they're not woven um and which means that they don't really have like a stretchiness to them so they won't conform to your leg properly um from a lot of reproductions and um other even if they're fairly good reproductions but a lot of them have this case of like they step so when you wrap especially with the long parties mainly just with the long parties really um when you wrap them around your leg they have this sort of stepping um sort of deal that's going on at the back where because it's not stretched it's not um like stretchy material it, it just like just sits and just hangs and it doesn't look right um it's very ineffective you easily catch things on it and yeah it just doesn't look great at all and doesn't look period really at all because you look at period, you look at period photos they are literally like spanking tight to the leg literally you just see you see you see the form of the cat their calves and everything um from photos when they've got their putties on so yeah so that's those ones so i'll go into that later i got the, i did this as i said um as a replacement for these so these are from what place glory us as well they are reproductions of foxes putties so they they they're a thicker they are thicker they're a thicker material which probably acts to why they're so bulky on my legs oh, you see probably seen in previous in videos when i well, when i've worn them or previous video i should say um and th they are lovely but they they are officers putties um and it wasn't too much of a problem they they conform fairly well to my leg because i believe like unlike most other um reproductions i think these are woven as well um which is really really nice sorry i had to cut there the dog just walked in through the door of the bedroom so sorry so yeah as i said these are these are wo they look to be woven so they do stretch fairly well, um, not perfectly because again they still are reproductions, and they do have that deficiency of most reproductions. They're not getting it right perfectly, but apart from that, they're still really, really nice. Um, and as as I said before, they're they're fairly thick, depend uh, compared to like the original, to, compared to like um, actual original made examples in the way of like, even the eighties ones. They're fairly thin, um, which means they're much more bulkier on the leg. They give you they make your calves look ridiculously huge. Um, if you can hear that, that's the dog walking around. Um, so yeah, uh, these were absolutely fine in a way. Um, still a bit bulky, as I said, but the colour was the main issue. So for officers putties, colour's really fine, even on the western front. This colour, so it's more of like a lighter khaki, um, uh, which is fine for that. Or even, say, during in the Middle Eastern campaigns or Gallipoli or whatever. Um, maybe not so good. maybe a bit later in the campaign in Gallipoli but in Mesopotamia the lighter ones are probably actually all right um but it depends what you see but most of the time it's just the same putties as everything but as I say yeah these are obviously putties. so I did try dyeing them um bit of a mistake I only used one sachet of dye when I should have used about three considering for the weight of them um and I for the dye I used I didn't have any like it's called dye fixer um and that basically keeps the colour in to what you want it really but I didn't have any of that at the time and it was sort of a quicker speed in trying getting done before the training event I went on a couple of weeks ago, weekends ago so so yeah it was a bit of a slapdash I have all, I have got some more dye in it but now I've done these I might try I might be sending these off possibly but I, it, it, um, so I, I digress really but yeah again as I said with the others I'll roll these out and you can have a look they've got quite nice like um labels in to make them look like originals and like with um fox's putties they have these like little uh little brass um like discs that which like um almost like split pin into the uh well kind of a well single pin even the sort of full pin into the putty themselves at the end which are really nice which say fox and an L for long or large, even probably long anyway. So, uh, but yeah, but, uh, at the end of the day, they're all really, really nice, but they don't fit the purpose that I need them for. So that's why I went to these in the end. So yeah, so I'll cut here and we'll go look at them rolled out, and then we'll wrap up the video after that. Okay, so now we have them here on the on the blanket. Um, 
So yeah, you can sort of see the sort of slight colour differences between them all, obviously. So this is the reproduction pair here of the Fox's putties. And you can see they're much, much lighter. I've got the uh, lights up at the moment, so it might be a bit brighter, but it generally brings up the colour quite well. So. so as I said about the little tab at the end, so it says Fox and then with the L for long. Um, I believe that is all large or whatever, but generally that's how it is. And the long tape, I've got these rolled from... So finishing at the um, tab end, so then it's easier to wrap, wrap onto the leg because you start at the bottom with this tab and then we go up. Um, these ones have just been rolled up like this way for storage, but generally they'd be rolled the opposite way, um, even though they're the short puzzies, but you, you prefer to start with the um, tape, uh, the non-tape end. So These ones are quite nice though, so I haven't, I haven't actually noticed this before, but these are named to a... Uh, to a... a C Finter, it's AC. It focuses. There we go. That's really nice. But yeah. So that's the uh, these ones. Let's see if we can find a date. Here we go. Um, a lot of these short ones have uh, like markings on them, like with the um, I think it's mark so stop number. I think that's. Can't really see a date. But yeah, very, very nice. And obviously, yeah, you can see how short these are. So these are the short um, three-foot ones. Quite synonymous of the 1980s and the Falklands Wars, etc. Well, the Falklands War, not wars. Um, so quite synonymous with that. But obviously seen in North African campaign, in World War II, in the Far East, in, in Italy, in Sicily, etc. Very, very small amounts in the Northwestern um um, Northwest Europe campaign, generally because parties were many, and they were they were worn side by side in the Italian campaign. But you see a lot when um, troops are wearing shorts, they generally will be wearing parties instead of gaiters, just because it's they're much more easy to um, wear. We we'll say with like the long socks, etc. At the time, let's put that the way, <clears throat> and then we get onto these ones. So these obviously originally started off as uh, them. So it's three pairs. So here's the thing end. Uh, I think from where I've sewed it, I've actually left this. Um, the end I left at the end was the non, um, was the cut edge. I shouldn't have done that, but I might reinforce it with like a stitch at the top. But yeah, that's generally how it is. There's one, one of the stamps, uh, which won't be too bad to sort of cover up. Yeah, that'll be fine. So there we go. And then we can see here is the uh, where I've sewed one end to the other. So if I just unroll this a bit more, there we go. So there's the maker's mark. There's a the maker's mark on the other one there as well. But yeah, that's where I've sewed it. So basically put about two centimeters of um, uh, each uh, putty onto each other. So about two centimeters width and then sewed it in like a box in like a rectangle um, sewn pattern just to secure it. I might go over again, but I think I did a fairly good job for my for what it was, and I got it done quite fairly quickly. So I was quite happy with that because I had to do what uh, four stitches, I think four. So it was it was a bit of a ball ache, but yeah, not too bad. As I say again, I've rolled these with um, finishing with the non tape end, um, and then I just wrap this around. Yeah, so it comes out from the outside just because then it's easier to put on, and so much quicker. Um, because I would advise whenever doing putties, if even if it be short or long or whatever, um, never um, put them onto your leg or your ankle or whatever from being completely unrolled. Um, always do it from a rolled up thing because it makes it so much quicker. You can get a much tighter fit um, and it just looks better all, all the same. So yeah, so that's fairly it really. Um, uh, the long putty fell out of favour. Well, was sort of discontinued in a way from the British Army um, 39-40 really because you still see troops um, going into uh, France with the BEF in 1940 with their service dress on um, that was before a battle dress was probably being rolled out because um, obviously everyone thinks the 1937 pattern was basically battle dress surge which became in general uh, rolled out properly in 1938 and then even though tro troops going into France in 1939 said have service dress on, so 
But yeah, but by the time of the German invasion there in 1940, most troops would have their battle dress, so... I digress, I've gone on a completely different topic. But yeah, so putties were still being used as service dress, obviously, and the short ones became more commonplace with um, other theatres, um, such as North Africa, Italy, and the Far East, etc. And obviously post-war as well. So generally for... Um, <clears throat> uh, with post-war, you still see um, gaiters being used, obviously, up until 1969, where it sees like, the last few uses of gaiters um, being used. Because um, battle dress was still being used, so that the 49 pattern battle dress was still being used at the time. And even when the combat, like the 60 pattern uh, combat smocks were being used, uh, you see troops in Northern Ireland in 1969 still wearing putties, but, uh, sorry, still wearing gaiters, sorry. Um, but putties were being brought in again. Just because it was much more easier and much cheaper to produce, etc., than doing uh, gators. But yeah, so that's that. I'll just cut now and um, we'll wrap up this video. Okay, so I really, really hope you enjoyed that. Um, as I said, again, this was a very brief video. If I have thinged on anything, please let me know. Got anything wrong, please let me know in the comments. Any uh, comment or any help is very much um, uh, asked for. So, again, really, really hope you enjoyed. Uh, I might be going into more detail on some other things related to this in a way um, down the line a bit, hopefully before uh, the trench event in September. So um, for those who don't know, um, I've mentioned it in a couple of other videos, <clears throat> in September I'm doing a 48 hour trench event. Um, so we're portraying the um, second battalion, the Oxfordshire and Buckinghamshire Light Infantry um, on the Somme around uh, late August, September time. Uh, Obviously, way past the first day of the Somme. Um, the battalion is at very low strength, and we basically will be in the line, uh, and we've got to basically portray that. Um, and it's kind of an experience. I've never done anything like this before. Um, we went into I've went into a bit of detail with the talk chat I did with Steve in a, a video, a couple um, one of my last videos. And uh, yeah, no, it's going to be a hell of an experience and I can't wait to do it and it's going to be awesome. So I'll try and get some photos from there. Um, it's going to be a bit hit and miss, um, depending on that. But there will be um, photos that Steve will be taking from his original camera. Um, there's a couple of photos I'll post up on the, um, the Facebook page and um, I'll let you guys think. Some of them didn't come out great, but then again, the camera is over a hundred well, about 100 years old now so so yeah that's that's what we expected but they the ones that come out good the ones that came out okay look absolutely awesome they look really really good um i'll try and get a copy of the um little uh film as well that steve did of us um coming out uh, marching up this like road bit and um, which was quite funny really because um some of the comments on the when he posted it on t on his tiktok page um where oh, by the way i have a tiktok account yeah, it's just one of those things. <laughs> um, I, I'm, it's mainly there so I can then uh, watch other people's stuff. Like Steve has his, um, a TikTok account as well, um, which he uses for little videos and does like live streams, etc. And we did a live stream yesterday. Sadly, I wasn't able to watch it um, because I was at a wedding. Um, but uh, so yeah, that's just how it is. He did. He was doing about like um, uh, British uniform and equipment and that the Great War. So that I, I really, really sad. A shame I couldn't watch that for good, but. Um, but yeah, that's that's just how life is in Europe, really. But yeah, so really, really hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll put some links to this uh, to the um, uh, the actual um, web link, or whatever, to what price glory. So if you want to get some of this parties, you can. Um, and I'll link some stuff to Steve as well. Uh, I'll link to my TikTok. I've got nothing on it. It's basically just like um, we're trying to get some followers at the moment. Just so I can then uh, do like um, live streams and that with Steve or live uh, conversations and stuff like that because you need over a certain amount of followers. Yeah, it's just one of those things, isn't it? Um, yeah, that's just how it is. So I put some links to that. Um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, go ahead. Whatever you want to do, anything is appreciated. Um, as usual, I'm going taking this ridiculously long-winded, but yeah. So really hope you enjoyed and goodbye.